Okay, hello everyone. As a change from the norm, today I will be interviewing Anna Kaczynski, Kaczynski uh, a world champion rower, dual degree, undergraduate degree with a, in sociology and psychology, and a, with a master's of school counselling. She's also an entrepreneur and uh, currently working as a social worker. Uh, how are you tonight? I'm good. Thanks for having me. This is very exciting. Different. <laughs> yeah, being on the other end of the uh, the verbal shtick, as it were. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so I'll get right into it. Uh, so, Anna, what would you tell your 14-year-old self if you could go back in time? Mm. I would tell her that everything will be okay. Um, probably the first thing that would have popped into my head when I was 14 is anxiety. What anxiety? <laughs> um, you know, that, you know, this whole journey that I've started was, it began at, eight, at 14 years old. And this is why this is such an important question when I ask other interviewees about that. I think that at that age, everything's still so new and we're still trying to figure out who we are and what we want to be in the world. And it's really exciting to hear about some of the other stories that I hear. But I guess for me, it was a really difficult time because there was a lot of things happening in my family. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just lost a parent and I had another parent who was quite abusive. And, you know, I was close with my sister, but she had she had gone on to do some, you know, she'd gone on to sort of live with her boyfriend at the time. So, yeah, I felt, I guess, a bit abandoned. But at the same time, it was a really good starting point for me to figure out who I needed to be. Mm. And I think without those years where things were tough, I wouldn't be as independent and strong as I am today. Um, I think something I've really loved about things I've heard from what other people have said but also what I would, so essentially what I would tell my 14 year old self right now would be everything will be okay and back yourself because something that we don't do enough of is encourage ourselves. I think we get so caught up with just, you know, doing everything to the best of our ability, but we don't actually ever tell ourselves, hey, you're actually doing a really good job and giving ourselves credit where it's due. So I think, yeah, make sure to, you know, tell yourself everything will be okay and back yourself. I think that would be my two pieces of advice. No, that's very good. Um, just as an extension of that, would you say that you, so you did get caught and you didn't realise how good of a job that you were doing back then? Because I know even <laughs> back, because I've known you for quite a while, even back then I know you were very good in, in, at some, you had some, you had some talents and you were, you, were, you were using them at the time. At 14? I don't think I was very good at many things <laughs> at 14. Um, well, for me, what I loved and pursued highly in my youth was rowing, obviously. Yeah. And I started at 14 and my sister actually got me into it. So I'm very grateful that she helped me with that. And when I started, I was not good. I couldn't stay in the boat. I kept falling out. And I got called Fat Bow. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and me and the coxswain, so for those of you who don't know much about rowing, is a little person who sits at the front and steers. We were the same the same size. And, yeah, so I, I was lucky if I won a race back then. Yeah. But I worked my ass off and it took a long time. And I committed even when things were difficult. And I think, yeah, it taught me a lot. So at 14, it's hard to know, hard to know that I was good. I was going to be as successful in life or, you know, with rowing and other things that I wanted to do. But I guess it was the starting point of me sort of going after the things that I wanted. Yeah, no, that's a good answer. So I'll move on to the next question, which is how did you decide on the career that you are currently partaking of them. Mm. So for those who don't know, I work full-time as a social worker 
for zero to six year olds to get funding for children that have developmental delays and disabilities. And I'm also building up my business, which is Aspire Beyond Greatness, to help youth, you know, mainly based in Australia because that's where I am, but globally to believe in themselves enough to go after what they want. And so that mm. looks like, you know, visualization, goal setting, really trying to figure out if they're unhappy with something, why that is and how they can change that. Because, you know, when I was younger, I didn't have that support and that's what I want for other people. To, to say that this is the career I'll be in forever is, you know, an understatement because everyone's career changes constantly. But I think I've known for a long time that I really love youth and I love empowering them. And I always love to leave people feeling better when they leave than when I, you know, start talking to them or interacting with them. Yeah. I, whether it's a smile or, you know, just that feeling you have when you leave people and they just they light up and they feel better. I want youth especially to have that because there's so many different people that influence you when you're young, right? Like your parents, your teachers, your, you know, your friends, yeah. your parents, friends, people on the street. There'll always be someone with people like... People in the media these days as well. You know, definitely. People, you know, people in videos and on the YouTube. Mm. On the YouTube. <laughs> you got yeah. all the streamers these days as exactly. well. Exactly. It's huge, yeah, and they all try and give you their two cents worth. And it's important and you have to listen to some of it, but it's more important that there's people in your life, I think I've learned sort of, you know, the hard way or even in, in good circumstances. The people that really care about you, it'll be like that perfect balance, right, of where they give you, you know, the teaspoon of cement when you really need to knuckle down and be told to pull your finger out. But then they also, they tell you when you're doing a good job and they make you want to work harder. And I think the best examples that I've had of that have been the coaches that I've had when I rode. And at the moment, I have a boss who, who demonstrates that and some team leaders who demonstrate that as well, which, you know, makes me really proud. Um, in terms of parenting, I have seen some really great parents. Um, you know, mine probably, they did the best that they could and I love them for what they've taught me um but i think i've learned more from the things i've seen from some really other great sort of people especially my grandparents and things like that um in terms of how i decide on my career um well i was actually coaching before i got into social work but i actually <laughs> when i first went to america so i studied at syracuse university and when i first went there i told myself i wanted to be a sports psychologist and as the degrees passed, I sort of finished my first undergraduate degree quite early. So about two years in to a four year degree, I finished the psychology degree and they asked me, you know, you're, you're on a scholarship, you can do another two years. Do you want to go for another one? And I thought, yeah, but what do I want to do? And I looked into some different ones and I really loved sociology, which was studying the groups of people. Yeah. So psychology is the mind and I actually enjoyed sociology a lot more because I think just sort of looking at human behaviours, it, it interested me a lot more. Um, and then after that, going into my master's when I was coaching, I realised that I loved the coaching part of it, but the school counselling part where I worked with kids was really interesting. And there was one girl that I worked with there and I really felt that I made a difference to her. She was a troubled youth and she would come in at lunch times and I'd help her, you know, just organize and plan things and try and figure out her situation. She was living out of home at the time and struggling. Mm. And so I think that every youth deser deserves an opportunity to be whatever they want in life. And we put a lot of limitations on people as to what they can't be. And, you know, that's what ultimately the career that I hope to end up in will empower, you know, as many youth as possible to just encourage them to be the best that they can be. No, that was a very good answer. Um, no, it sounds like you thought all that through very well. Um, but I just want to circle back to the issue of role models before we move on. Um, so you say that you, you know, learn and you model, it's hopeful that you model yourself after like obviously positive role models and you come across, you know, obviously 
positive across the fair, a few positive role models. But do you think you can learn off those who maybe at the time you don't think the necessarily bad role model, but looking back on it, do you think now that's not probably the best person to have, have they might have taught you some things, but the way they went about it was wrong or they weren't the most supportive or maybe even a little bit abusive in some ways. Do you think you mm. can, you've learned things off them as well? Oh yeah, definitely. I think you learn more from negative role models than you do positive ones. Yeah. And I hate to say that because no one deserves to be abused and no one deserves to be treated badly. But unfortunately, we all go through things in life. And that's what I'm learning as I get older is that every single person that we come across is going through a challenge, has gone through a challenge or will go through a challenge. And we can't judge people based on what we see. But from the role models that I've had, the negative ones I've had, you know, for example, with parenting, it's taught me to love a whole lot more than what I normally would with people because everyone deserves love. And, you know, not everyone in the street is going to come up to you and be like, I need a hug, I really want to be loved. <laughs> like, <laughs> but you can just tell, like, that's just something that we all want, right? And for yeah. maybe some bosses I've had who have not treated me well, who have maybe put me down or told me that I'm not doing a good job or consistently making me feel small, it just made me realise that I deserve so much better than that. And I think, you know, despite how difficult it was going through some of those challenging times, some of them being away from family, from friends, from everything that I had known, I think the best thing that ever taught me you know, the years that I did take away. I'm sorry, who's ever? The best times that I, the best things that I ever took away from the experiences that I had. Yeah. Yeah, they were, it was to be confident and to stand up for myself. Yeah, that's, that's what I learned from a challenging role model. Oh, no, that's good. That's um, a very good, very good uh, way to look at it. Uh, so we'll move on now. So what is your greatest life lesson? <laughs> I love asking people this because I know it's really tough to narrow one thing down. I would say that no matter what to keep going because life is such a cycle. And since I've been a young person, there's something inside of me that always wants things to be done and to be done quickly. <laughs> I'm not very patient. Um, for those of people that know me well. Um, but something that I think is, is really important is that, you know, life really is a journey and I'm learning that more and more. And, you know, there's so many things that I wanted to do in life that, you know, it didn't end up that way. But then instead of it, I got to meet and learn so many more, so much more than what I thought. And, you know, every day we're always working towards the things that we want and whatever those things look like, we can get there. And whether it's when we're 47 or 65 or 101, I just think, you know, what we should be asking ourselves every day is what legacy do we want to leave? And I think that's something that I, you know, want to keep more in the back of my mind. And when days get difficult or when I feel like giving up or when I'm exhausted or I want to cry or when things, you know, don't always look the way that I want them to, or even if I do have good days, it's just remembering, bringing it back to keep going because life is so much greater than those those difficult situations. Or even if you have a good day too, it's all part of the journey. So, yeah, keep working towards the things you want because you will get there if you just persist. Yeah, no, for sure. I've, I've noticed that about you as well because I, I know you quite well. And um, there's some times where I try and tell you to slow down a bit because you would be <laughs> exhausted. Yeah. Um, it's like, no, no, i got to keep going. But no, I think um, I'd say that you, you've been getting better at time management. That's just a product of more experience, I guess. Um, so what has been your worst setback so far? In your life? Yeah, my greatest setback. And... I think that's so important because it makes people who they are. I think the challenges, you know, you, you mentioned having negative role models teaches you things as well. And I completely agree. 
And I think that setbacks teach you a lot more about yourself than winning all the time, right? Mm. If every kid got a gold medal every time they showed up every day, it wouldn't mean much. But it's when you don't get those things and you work for them that it means more. And I actually really love, you know, the underdog or people that don't get what they want because that was me. You know, when I wrote, I was too short. I was probably too big at times. Um, at school, I got terrible grades. I don't think I got no P when I graduated high school. But now I have a master's degree because I worked really hard and I didn't let, you know, the teachers who told me, you know, I should be in special ed or that I always got D's or things like that, um, you know, bring me down. I once had a, a football kid say to me, D's get degrees. So I just went with that. <laughs> um, you know, I think, but one specific thing, I don't think I could nail it down. I thought that when I was younger that, you know, losing my dad was going to be the most difficult thing in my whole life. But since then, I've been through a lot of challenging things. I've lost other family members. I've been through injuries. I've lived away from home. Um, you know, I've dealt with heartache and loss and pain and all sorts of things. But I don't think that there's any sort of one instance, you know, that I would say has been the most challenging. Mm. But I think giving up on myself would be would be the biggest challenge. So when there was points in my life where I kind of just like stopped caring and gave up on myself, that was probably a setback in, yeah. in and of itself. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, it definitely sounds like it'd be, um, especially when you seem like you're quite driven. Um, yeah, no, that probably feels like you're letting yourself down, thinking back on it now. Um, and on the other side of the coin, what are you most proud of in your life right now? Mm. What you've done, what you're trying to mm -hmm. achieve? I love this question because I think that everyone should be proud of something. And if you had asked me, you know, as a young person, it was becoming a world champion because I dealt with a lot of crap when I was a young person. So that for me was kind of like being able to stand up in front of everyone and think I'm actually good at something in life. Like I, there's so, I, I can be something in life. But since then I didn't give up and I've gone on to do other things. But I would say the thing I'm most proud of is that every day I keep going after what I want and, you know, I care less and less about what other people think, which might sound cool but that's a huge step forward for me because my whole life I've always worried about what everyone else thinks mm. and what everyone else wants. And a lot of times I don't always do what's best for myself. So I think just going after what I want and being my own person and being someone that I can be proud of means more to me than any amount of money or any amount of accolades or just anything in life is just living the best life that I can and becoming that person who I always wanted to be. No, it's great. Um, I can say I agree somewhat with that. I mean, if you're not happy in yourself and, and what you're doing, and um, you go, you've got to be somewhat selfish if you want to sort of go towards the goals you're looking to get. You can't just if you're always thinking and putting, being influenced by the people around you, you're never going to go probably the full distance and reach your full potential. So no, that makes sense. Um, so on a related note, what do you bring to the table when you turn up at an event, a function or just anywhere? <laughs> in really? life. Yeah. I think I wake up in the morning with a huge smile on my face. I'm just excited to live. I have a lot of people tell me, you're always smiling. <laughs> and I think, am I? I don't even know it. But I think for me, I'm just, every day is, it excites me. I've learned a lot from a young age. I lost some people that I really loved and I've also been treated really badly by some people. And what that taught me was that life is so much shorter than what we think. I mean, never know how long people are going to be around for. And so I like to be happy and enjoy life because I think that's so important. Yeah. Um, other things, I'm, yeah, I am driven and, I'm, and I think that will always be the case. And I think I want to be that old granny who who's still like running around with a sweatband on her head or going bowling or, you know, doing some activities with the grandkids. Going and to the festival, being like that. 
Brian, you're the best pool dancing. So. Yeah, my rollerblades and my <laughs> side pink hair. Like, I still want to live life and enjoy life as much as I can because it doesn't matter how old you are, but you have to enjoy life. So I think that and, yeah, being driven and, and positive are really important to me. And, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's great. So what inspires you to feel like this and to act like this every day? Like, how do you, because mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's, I, you must have something that works for you to, to make you wake up with a smile on your face every day. I mean, so many people, yeah, you yeah, hear about how they're like, they're almost going through life a bit like a zombie, I guess, so more, mm. more, like, they find it hard to see the positives. So how do you see mm. the positives every day? Mm. I think I... I have always been really positive, but actually about, I think it was almost about two years ago, I really struggled to adjust when I first came back from America and I was really unhappy. And I would say that a part of me sort of gave up on myself and what my journey was. But when I, you know, I did the work that I need to do, I went to see Stuart, hypnotherapist, and after figuring out what my vision was and what I wanted to do in life and really going after it every day, it has made a difference in my life. And I think just seeing the things that I want every day, hearing them and just taking small steps every day towards what I want, I think that is what inspires me every day is because, you know, I think we have to keep checking in with ourselves because we walk around all the time and we see people that are successful, right? And you look at them and you think, oh, they've probably never been broke. They've probably never been hungry. They've probably never struggled. Look at them. They've got all the money in the world. They're happy. They can have whatever they want. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Everyone has struggled at some point. And even if, you know, they were born into a family with a lot of money, that doesn't always mean everything's going perfectly all the time. Mm. Well, they probably um, also, the way I look at it as well is, I mean, people always try to show their best face to the world as well. They're not going to show you all the things that are going on behind the scenes that necessarily aren't necessarily positive because they want to show themselves in the best light. Um, that's just human nature, really. So they're not going to be... If they've got problems at home with their wife or with their kids or at work or anything, they're not going to show it to you because that's just showing vulnerability. And us humans, we don't generally like to do that unless we, unless we're with people close to us. Yeah, definitely. But I would say going towards the direction and living out my my full truth, that's what inspires me every day. And probably just helping others to live out theirs as well. Yeah, for sure. So who is your biggest supporter in, in life and these endeavours of yours? <laughs> endeavours? <laughs> <laughs> um I always feel really proud of people who say themselves and I wish that I could say that I've been my biggest supporter, but I am really fortunate the whole throughout my whole life with everything that I've ever struggled with. For some reason, I've always had people to love and support me and whether it's like friend, my friends, parents or other family friends or a coach or just someone that I know through some word of mouth, there'll always be someone there to support me and you know they may not be there forever but I've had a lot of people mm. I think just in terms of it being internally driven and going after what I want I'm the most consistent person that I've had but I definitely have you know I have a great sister I have great cousins aunts uncles and my grandparents and I have a great partner now <laughs> so yeah I, I have a lot to be grateful for and a lot of people that when when I am struggling, they support me to be my best self. Yeah, that's awesome. You've got so many people around who love and support you. Um, yeah, no, that's great. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Because uh, I just wanted to you know, acknowledge a few things that um, I've noticed in the interview and also because I, I know you quite well, just that I probably would have, I acknowledge on a relatively regular basis as well, um, is firstly that it's, you have got a very good work ethic. You always seem to 
keep going when a lot of people would would quit or maybe even slacken off a little bit, which is uh, very admirable. And you're also um, very passionate and optimistic. You always like you know what where, where your interest in it lies, and you you go after it and you always few things in a positive light, even though sometimes they don't always go the best. You still you still you know, you got you you think in the future that it's gonna go better, you know in the future it's gonna go better. And um, you don't have much quitting you, do you Emma? <laughs> 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 um, well I think that is it unless you have anything yeah. to add. Yeah, no I don't but yeah, my favorite quote I think ever is it's not about the size of the dog in the fight, it's about the size of the fight in the dog. So I think I'll mm. stick with that for pretty much forever. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you for coming on the Aspire Beyond Greatness podcast.